Hello to everyone and welcome to KED Academy Physics Practicals Part 2. So in today's video we are going to be looking at the, the venia caliper, how we can use a venia caliper to measure both the internal and the external diameter of an instrument. Um, this is actually the second video on, the measurement, on measuring instruments. So yesterday I uploaded a video on how to use a micrometer to measure the the diameter of any instrument so i'm going to put a link in the description box and also above the video so that if you haven't checked that video out you can uh, look at the video before coming to this so um, as we all know as a requirement we need to know how to use our instruments in the physics practicals because um, using this uh, instrument is very crucial because we're going to use the measurements to carry out experiments which are just beyond the measurement that we get from it. Like the experiment is to measure the resistivity of a wire. So we need to measure the diameter of our wire. And to do that, we need to know how to use our micrometer to measure the, the diameter of uh, our wire. And uh, using a venia caliper, knowing how to use a venia caliper, we can use it to like get the thickness of a cup, get the thickness of a BZ, you can also get the thickness of a ring. You can be asked to measure the volume of a cube using those instruments. So experiments like that can actually come in physics. Or you can be given a block and you're asked to use a venia caliper to measure the diameter of that block and eventually the volume of the block. Or you might be given a BZ and you're asked to measure the volume of that BZ or a ring and you're asked to measure the thickness of that ring. So experiments like that do come in physics practicals so knowing how to use this instrument is very very important that's why i started by first of all, uploading videos on how to use this instrument because it's uh, a bit complicated but um knowing how to use them the other experiments that i'll be uploading on the channel will be very easy so if please uh, i would like to advise you to subscribe to the channel to the youtube channel so that whenever i upload more videos you'll be notified because this is actually the part two part uh, part two i uploaded part one yesterday so eventually part three and the part four will be coming up before the physics uh, practicals proper on monday so please i advise you to to subscribe and turn on the bell notification so that whenever i upload you will be notified so i'm not only i'm not only going to end at the level of the physics practicals or the practical sections of, um, of of all the science subjects but i'll also be uploading videos on uh, on the paper two and the paper one so if you also face difficulties in that section you can always feel free to put your questions in the comment section so um before we get into the video i would like to give the last advice which is Whenever you want to do your physics experiment, always make sure you look at the unit on, on your instrument because in this video, the unit on the instrument might not be the same as might not be the same unit that you you have on the day of your experiment. So it's very very important to always look at the unit on your instrument before you start measuring. Before you start measuring any, uh, before you start taking any measurement. So. Um, Let's get into the video. A metric vernier caliper. There are different kinds of vernier scales designed to do different jobs, but they all work pretty much the same way. Today, we're going to look at a metric vernier designed to measure to the nearest 1 50th of a millimeter. That is 0 0.02 millimeters. See how 1 divided by 50 equals 0 0.02? Now, the first thing we're going to measure with our vernier caliper is nothing. That's right, we'll measure zero. It may sound like a silly thing to do, but we're going to do it for a couple of reasons. Let's do it and you'll see what I mean. You see, when the calipers are fully closed, measuring zero width, you can see the places where you can take measurements. These surfaces are where the two parts of the calipers line up. You'll also notice that there are gaps in a couple of places on the calipers. These are not places to take measurements, so don't mess up by putting something in one of those gaps. Now, with the calipers closed, you can see where you're supposed to read the main scale. There are two scales on a vernier caliper, the main scale and the vernier scale. I'm going to erase the vernier scale 
and let you just look at the main scale first. You see, the zero mark points to the place where you're supposed to read the main scale. Right now, it points to zero. Do you see that? Good, let's read the main scale first. It's super easy. I'll close the calipers on this workpiece and we'll see what the main scale says. These marks represent whole millimeters. So the reading is one, two, three, four, five, five millimeters. Just be sure to look at the zero mark and not at this part. That's a common mistake and it'll give you the wrong reading. So the reading is five millimeters. That's pretty easy, right? Before we move on to the vernier scale, let me show you what it's going to tell us, okay? Let's say when we looked at the main scale, the reading wasn't right on the mark like it was last time. Let's say it looked like this. See how the mark is between five and six millimeters? It looks like it's a little beyond halfway. You see, the vernier scale is going to tell us almost exactly how far over the mark is. Okay, you're ready to see the vernier scale, but I'm only going to draw the main part of it first. Now, you see the mark's number from 0 to 10. Each of these marks represents a tenth of a millimeter. They're going to tell us the tenths of a millimeter, and here's how they work. Look carefully, and you will notice that one of the marks on the vernier scale lines up better with the main scale marks than the others. Which one looks like it lines up best to you? I'll zoom in and let you look. Let me show you a hint about where to look on the vernier scale to see where the marks line up. You see how our pointer was a little more than halfway between marks? That means the vernier scale will line up a little past halfway. Now, do you see the mark that lines up better than the rest? It looks like the seven is lining up. The seven means 0.7 millimeters, but this caliper can measure even more accurately than that. I'll redraw all the marks and let you look again. Now, see that the mark next to the seven lines up best. But what is the value of that mark? Remember how this caliper had a label that said 0.02 on it? That is what each mark is, 0.02 millimeters. Let's count up on the vernier scale to be sure we've got it. This six would be 0.60, the next mark 0.62, then 0 0.64, 0 0.66, 0 0.68, 0 0.70, then 0.72. The reading is 5.72 millimeters. Pretty neat, huh? I'm going to let you try a few. We're going to start off easy. I'm going to draw a caliper that only reads to the nearest tenth of a millimeter, just to be sure you're with me. I'm going to show you the overall picture first, then zoom in to let you see the vernier better. Okay? When you see Sparky's pause, pause the video and write down what you think the reading is. The reading is 16.2 millimeters. Let me step you through it just in case you missed something. Here are the whole millimeters from the main scale. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. And you see how the reading is just past the 16 mark? So we'll look to the front of the vernier scale for where the marks line up. And there it is at the 0.2 mark. So the reading is 16.2 millimeters. Got it? Okay, let's go for broke and see if we can read the full 0.02 millimeter resolution. Ready for this one? Again, I'll show the whole caliper, then zoom in to let you see the vernier better. Here we go. Pause the video and write down your answer. Now, I know this is hard. So before I give the answer, I'm going to point to the place where the vernier lines up. Does that help? Take a minute and check your answer and be sure it's correct. The reading is 19.16 millimeters. Okay, let's try another one. This time I won't give any hints, but I will zoom way in so you can see the calipers really well. If you get this one, you pretty much know what's going on. Pause the video and make sure you can read the whole millimeters. Did you say 12 millimeters? Okay, let's do the hard part and read the vernier scale. I'll zoom in and let you take a closer look. But first, remember the trick? See how the reading is beyond halfway between the marks? That means we need to look on the high side of the vernier scale. I'll slide the view down there and let you look. Now here we go. Pause the video and look carefully.
the mark that lines up best is here. Now, what number is that? This is the 0.7 mark. So, 0 0.72, 4, 6. The answer is 12.76. Precision is the quality of being sharply or clearly defined, or how closely the indicated value matches the true value. The precision of a measurement device is in part a function of its resolution, which is the smallest graduation into which an instrument is divided. For example, a rule marked in one half millimeters has a higher resolution and thus can be more precise than a rule marked in millimeters. Accuracy is defined as the degree to which an indicated value conforms to an acceptable standard value. For example, two tape measures may both have the same resolution or graduation, in this case millimeters. However, if these tape measures are not equally accurate, their differences become more noticeable at greater lengths. Each graduation on the stationary bar represents one millimeter. The vernier plate essentially divides one millimeter into 50 units, with each graduation representing two one-hundredths of a millimeter. These 50 units represent exactly the same distance as 49 units on the stationary bar. Because of this minute difference, when a measurement is taken, only one graduation on the plate will exactly coincide with a graduation on the stationary bar. This intersection is where the fractional portion of a vernier caliper measurement is read. To read the vernier caliper, first indicate the number of millimeters that are between the zero on the stationary bar and the zero on the vernier plate. Then, locate where the graduation on the vernier plate exactly coincides with the graduation on the stationary bar. And reading off of the vernier plate, note that number's value in hundredths of a millimeter. Add the vernier plate reading to the number of millimeters counted on the stationary bar for the final measurement. Micrometers are produced in various precisions, both in metric and English units. In every case, it is the thread pitch of the spindle screw that makes each type different. The thread pitch is the distance between two adjacent thread crests. In this example, the thread pitch of the micrometer spindle screw is precisely one half millimeter. Each revolution of the thimble moves the micrometer spindle one half millimeter. The micrometer has a reading line on the sleeve. The vertical graduations on the top of the reading line each represent a single millimeter. The vertical graduations below the reading line indicate half millimeters. The beveled edge of the thimble is graduated into 50 divisions. Since a single revolution of the thimble moves the spindle one half millimeter, each thimble graduation equals one fiftieth of one half millimeter or one one-hundredth of a millimeter. The thimble is rotated and the spindle advanced until the feature is held between the anvil and the spindle face. To read this micrometer, add the number of millimeters and half millimeters visible on the sleeve to the number of hundredths of a millimeter indicated by the thimble graduation, which coincides with the reading line on the micrometer sleeve.